Whether you're interviewing for your next UX summer internship, your first full-time job, or even your next full-time job, there are always better or worse ways to present yourself and your work to recruiters and hiring managers. In this video, I'm going to go over six things to keep an eye on, specifically when you are interviewing for a position that you have to present your work over a video call to hiring managers. During my few years working in the Bay Area and Silicon Valley when I interviewed, other interns or designers. I learned something new. I got some new insights along the process. So I figured it might be worthwhile to share those with you so that you can ace your next UX interview. There are six tips I want to share and I will go down the list one by one. Still watching? Great, let's get into it, yo. But seriously, let's just get started and roll the intro. Good morning everyone, my name is Justine, I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. As we are working and interviewing more remotely, the interview format has changed. As interviewees, we should be aware and prepared for that, and that is the overarching theme for these six tips. So now, without further ado, let's dive right into it. Speaking of being remote, that leads us to tip number one, use videos cautiously. In one of my previous videos, I recommend using videos in a UX portfolio because they communicate more information at a given time and therefore it's a more effective way to present your design. I still think that is true. However, videos are not silver bullets. They're not the best for all situations. Especially when it comes to Zoom or video call interviews, videos can break down, can show you disadvantages very, very quickly. This question summarizes pretty well. How can you guarantee that the internet speed for you and your hiring managers are so fast that your videos will play with no delay? I personally cannot guarantee that and I think most people can't. If either side has any delay, your video will be freezing, glitching, jittering. What you are talking over is not going to be in sync with the video content. Then it just defeats the purpose of using videos in your presentation. Also, if your video has sound, oh boy, that can be worse. Audio breaking up on the top of a freezing video, horrible experience for your hiring manager. Playing a video on Vimeo or using Vimeo as your player could be even worse from what I've seen and experienced. The entire video can pause and load for 10 plus seconds. So the worst combination you can do is do a video with audio on Vimeo. I highly recommend not to do that. You don't want your hiring manager to be like, what is up with this dude? Therefore, when I say use GIFs and videos, I really mean to use it on your online portfolio. An online portfolio only for your hiring managers or recruiters to, to look at it on their own. When the hiring managers check out your website, it's only relying on their network and most of the time it should be okay. You're not screen sharing, you're not casting anything, so there will not be a synchronization issue. If you were to present your work on site in person, then you can yeah use a lot of videos and GIFs in your, your keynote, your PowerPoint, because you are projecting it, you're screen sharing it locally. Put it on the big screen in front of your audience, that's fine because it's a local environment. Whew. That's a long one, but hopefully you see my point and don't use video on Vimeo. Sounds like I can wrap it. Video on Vimeo. No. Anyways, now let's go to the next tip. Tip number two, use slide transition cautiously. Personally, I love animation, great transition, make it smooth so everything feels more seamless, more cohesive. However, again, a similar caveat, be careful, be mindful, be cautious about using slide transitions. If you use keynotes to present over Zoom or Google Hangout, go very light on magic move because the more movements your presentation have, the more likely some jittering and glitching will happen once the Wi-Fi doesn't like you. Then your magic move is no longer magic. And if it's no magic, why use it? Magic move is great when it works. So again, if you're presenting locally in person, totally fine, use magic move. And that is it for this tip. Tip number three, make a new presentation for video calls. Let's align on the definitions here. Any form of documentation of your work, your design work, is a presentation. When you present your work in school, you might have like a PDF or keynote or PowerPoint, Notion, Prezi, Portfolio, Online, WordPress, etc. They are all presentations. They come in all different kinds of mediums. What I'm trying to call out here is to choose the right medium or the better medium for a particular situation, which is in this case, a video call presenting your work remotely, over Wi-Fi, over screen sharing. We all have a web online portfolio, right? 
If you don't, you really should have one, especially for UX. I actually have made a series on Portfolio. I'll have it linked up here and description down below. Feel free to check it out. We use Portfolio for the ease of access, for the hiring manager's access. They can browse on their laptop, desktop. It's fast to get to the point across and get a glimpse of your work. They can check it out anytime, anywhere they want, as long as they have an internet connection. When you go into a video call and share your work, that's a little bit different. The context has changed a bit. In a video call, you're remotely, virtually speaking to the hiring manager and presenting your work. It's a conversation. It's two-way. In that case, a web portfolio might not be the best medium to present. I have two reasons for that. One, your web portfolio is optimized for other people to check out your work on their own time. It's not optimized for you to present to other people. You might have a lot of videos, GIFs, animations in your online portfolio for hiring managers to check out at their own pace. That could work in this setup. But when you screen share the same content, full of videos and animation, and try to talk through it over Zoom, it might not work well for the same reasons we just talked about. Number two, the content that you want to show could be different because the needs are different. The need for an online portfolio is to communicate your work from a higher level view and showcase your execution. The need for a video call presentation is to walk through more details, more iterations, and design decisions. Therefore, a web portfolio might not have everything that you want to present, or it might not have everything that the hiring manager is looking for. The action item here is that I would recommend taking the time and create another slide deck so that you can form a better narrative when presenting. It could be in Figma, it could be in Keynote, PowerPoint, even a PDF. Just a way to tie things up and optimize for video call presentation. Personally, I've never done that in the past. I always just screenshot my online portfolio. Hmm, maybe that's why I got so many rejections. This is actually one of my recent realizations after I interview other people. I realized, oh, it's actually pretty convenient, pretty effective to have a smaller, more compact, more focused slide deck to present their work in a more controlled narrative. So if I were to do it again, yeah, I will make another slide deck. Tip number four, keep an open discussion. This is pretty straightforward. Don't launch a monotone automatic speech. Don't read over a script. For clarification, I did mention in one of my videos to write down what I say so I can practice and rehearse it so when I talk to the hiring manager in video call, I, I could sound more natural and know what I'm gonna say and cut off all those, um, uh, what we like and those kind of things. The key here is to sound natural. If I read over the script, it's no longer natural. There's no eye contact, there's no interaction. You need to engage with the hiring managers or whoever's on the panel. You need to pause and ask them to see if they have any questions. It's a conversation, it's not a speech. After outlining a project, pause for questions. After each project, pause for questions. It's also a good way to check if your internet connection is working, if people are listening, especially when you launch a presentation and probably take over the whole screen, you don't see your interviewers anymore. It's also a good way to check if you're on time. It could be hard or awkward for them to interrupt you, to stop you in the middle, so you can ask them how much time you have left. Even if you don't ask that, since you have a habit of pausing at some point in the presentation, they will know, they can anticipate, they can expect, there will be some pauses coming. And then at that point, they can jump in and say, hey, so that we don't go over time, we can jump to Q&A. Again, just so you know, I have made that mistake before. Yeah, very sad. One-way speech. But that's okay, I have learned, I have iterated my presentation skills, and now I have no more one-way speech or any awkward interruptions. Tip number five, keep track of time. This actually tests your time management skills. Since you are the one presenting, you have the total control of how the presentation flows and how the conversation goes. Make sure you show what the hiring managers need to know, check on the time so you know when it's running low, practice your presentation and give it a go. If you tend to go over, maybe you have too much content or you're going too slow. Yeah, you can totally wrap that part, going too slow. Yo, you want to keep track of the time because you don't want your interviewers to interrupt you when you're presenting. You also don't want to only have three minutes left for Q&A because you also want to ask questions. To keep yourself on track, there are a few ways. If you use Keynote with an external monitor, you can totally add a stopwatch in the presenter view so you know how much time you have spent presenting. Or you can use your phone, turn on a stopwatch, but make sure to set the screen auto turn off to be more than 30 minutes. Otherwise, it defeats the purpose of a persistent reminder. Similarly, you can buy a stopwatch or timer thing from Amazon, which comes in pretty handy in my opinion. You press the button and stay on time.
or you can just go ahead and ask them in the presentation ask the hiring manager whether you should keep going or show another just quick project or maybe just jump to Q&A okay last one tip six ask questions make sure to ask questions at the end of the interview after the presentation typically you might notice there's always a reserved time block for Q&A the Q&A time is there for a reason so make sure you realize and actualize its purpose it's meant for you to ask about the role the company the team the culture anything along those lines it's a two-way interview and that is a time for you to interview them a few things here try not to ask a lot of random questions hey how are you doing what do you think about outfit you like it huh what coffee do you guys drink on the design team sure those are fun but how do those actually help you decide whether you want to join or work for them here are some questions that I typically would ask. Who's on the team? How many designers, engineers, and PMs? I ask because I want to know who I potentially be working with. One engineer or three engineers, they're very different. I can expect you'll be pretty strapped with one engineer and things can get slower and takes longer to build just because you're so understaffed. Do I want to work in team with just one engineer? Or maybe I enjoy working super closely with one engineer. This question can affect my decision to join. Another question, for example, what kind of project will I be working on? They could say it's for an internal tool or it's for a consumer facing product. I personally only want to do consumer facing, so internal tool is pretty much a default no to me. This question will affect my decision. A while back, I published two videos on how to evaluate UX offers, which I had a pretty extensive four section table dissecting every part of an offer. A lot of those questions are actually very applicable to the Q&A session. When you ask about role or company specific questions, the hiring manager can be like, ah, oh, this candidate is pretty excited about what we do here. Yeah, they're curious and they're interested in learning more. At the end of the day, you should have a take of what you might want from an internship or working at a company. Who you might want to work with, what do you want to learn, what kind of environment you want to be in. This is not rocket science, it's nothing complicated, it's really about you. It's about what you are looking for, what do you want. Follow that thoughts and your questions should come in pretty naturally. So what do you guys think? Do these tips give you more insights or new way to approach how to do video call interviews in this more increasingly remote environment? Generally speaking, if you compare video call presentation versus in-person presentation, you might start to see some differences and new factors will come in and then you might be able to come with some new points that I have not covered here. If you do, please leave a comment down below. I would love to hear what you think. And as usual, any thoughts or comment would be great too. There are a lot more UX design video coming up. If you have a particular preference on which one you want to see first, make sure to leave a comment down below. Well, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful or insightful, please destroy the like button for a YouTube algorithm. This is still a small channel, so every like counts and I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. If you want to see more UX career tips or design videos like this, consider smash the subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content down the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Cheers!